For the last video in this Croctober series, I am not sharing one or even two, but three recipes that we are going to double to make six meals. Hey guys, if you are new, my name is Vanessa and I have been sharing a crock pot themed video two times a week for this entire month. And I started out by letting you guys know that throughout this whole series, I am doing a giveaway as well. So today is the last day that you can enter. So I definitely want to, wanted to remind you guys about that. There's only going to be a one winner in this giveaway and I will be sending out a crock pot and an instant pot to help you out in your kitchen for this holiday season or if you already own those and you don't want me to send you one for a gift or anything like that I will just send you hundred and fifty dollars so you guys can use it to spruce up your kitchen or buy something new for you for this holiday season and all you have to do to enter this giveaway is leave a comment on all of my crock pot videos that I have shared this month I made it super easy and I put them all in one playlist so I will have that playlist linked down in the description box in case you guys are new to this series and you wanna go check them out and get yourself entered. So I hope you guys hit that subscribe button and decide to join me in our community here because I have a lot of fun coming up for the end of the year. A lot of yummy goodies and just fun things that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Like I mentioned, I've got six meals that we are going to make today and I'm going to show you the price and throw them all together and they are super easy freezer meals for your crock pot. So let's go ahead and jump right into getting them all prepared. We are going to turn all of these ingredients, which cost me less than $60 at Walmart, into six really easy crock pot freezer meals. Felt I'm done with the defense Throw back and climb over your fence Had to show, show you that I was a mess So you were shrugging your shoulders I'm closed off, that's what I told you Soon enough, everything started to change Cause there's no going back, no going back There's no going back to your own life Okay, now that my bags are labeled, I figured I would show you guys everything that I picked up. I even wanted to share the receipt. I only went in for the items that I wanted for my freezer meals. So my total was actually $68.71, you can see there, but I did spend $12 on garlic bread. I picked up six boxes of garlic bread, which is not necessary. I just wanted to go ahead and have a quick side. That way everything is already in the freezer and I don't have to scramble and try to find something else to go with my dinner meal. So everything total was $68, but it was under 60 if you do not wanna go ahead and pick up the garlic bread. So I've got a five pound bag of carrots, six onions, four Roma tomatoes, one lime, one bunch of garlic or one head of garlic. I've got two pounds of mild ground Italian sausage. You could use the hot if you like that. My kids are not huge fans of super spicy, so I always get the mild. I've got one package which has three fairly large chicken breasts in it. I need about two pounds total, and this one's two and a half. So what I'm going to do, since I'm making two meals out of this, each of my bags is gonna get one, and then I'm gonna cut that third one in half. So each bag will get one and a half chicken breasts. Two bags or two 12 ounce packages of frozen chopped spinach, two 12 ounce bags of cut green beans, I've got two bags that are each two pounds of meatballs. You could get away with, if you can find the smaller bags of meatballs, the one pound, you could totally get away with just using that depending on your family size. We love meatballs and I wanna make sure that I'm making 
the meatball one at least enough to have leftovers because again my kids love meatballs it is definitely one thing that i know i can get them to eat so i did opt for the two pound bags i'm going to be using those four cans of white kidney beans or cannellini beans then i've got some tomato juice here four jars of pasta sauce whatever kind you want these are the 24 ounce ones and then these are actually not going into our freezer bags but you will need them the day of cooking so you might as well go ahead and pick them up and that way again on the day of cooking you're not scrambling and trying to find anything or having to go back out to the store it's already in your pantry ready to go so i've got six containers the 32 ounce ones of chicken broth Okay, so this is where I differ from a lot of people who make freezer meals. Everybody will tell you, I mean, at the end of the day, you do what works best for you, right? So a lot of people recommend prepping everything. If you're doing multiple recipes, like I have all my stuff here, they would suggest cutting up all your onions and all your carrots for every recipe, every meal that you're doing. I don't like doing that. I've tried to do that and it's just too much for me to handle. I like to take small things and check them off. So that is just what works for me. So I'm gonna be doing two at a time because I am making six total meals, but it's three recipes that I'm doubling each one. So I've got my ingredients for the first one, which is the crock pot meatball veggie soup. I've got my bags all labeled. You definitely wanna do that before you start filling them. Make sure you put the date. This is a question that I get a lot. How long do you have to eat freezer meals? It really depends on what you're putting inside it. I like to make my freezer meals and then eat them within a month or two. So whenever I know that I don't have any freezer meals or you guys are requesting them a lot, I'll go ahead and see what I have in my freezer. Then I will plan, make some freezer meals and I will start incorporating them into our meal plan right away. And that just helps out for the next month or two for dinner. I don't think I've ever kept a freezer meal longer than three months because then you are gonna start to see the freezer burn. You are gonna start to lose a little bit of the flavor. So I do recommend one to two months. Just start incorporating them right after you make them and it should be fine. All right, so for this, I'm going to be cutting and peeling eight carrots for each bag. I've got one onion I'm going to dice up. I'm gonna add an entire bag of my green beans. I am going to drain and rinse my beans and add the whole can of that. Entire jar of pasta sauce and my big old bag of already fully cooked meatballs. This is everything I bought. The only thing I did not buy that's not included in the total are staples that I already have on hand. So I didn't go out and buy freezer bags. If you've never done freezer meals before, you are gonna want the freezer safe bags. And then these little holders are just nice to have. You could put your bag in a big bowl. You don't have to have these holders. I just, I make freezer meals quite often, so I love to have them. But I will have these linked down below in case you guys want to check them out. So as far as the seasonings, I have some Italian seasoning on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a tablespoon into each bag, and then you can always Always adjust that add more add salt and pepper whatever you guys like the day of cooking as well but I'm gonna go ahead and get my seasoning in my bag now and that way that's just one less thing I have to worry about on the day of cooking I can just take it out the night before let it thaw in the fridge overnight and then the morning of just dump it all in and I am good to go no adding anything extra other than your broth you really don't want to put your chicken broth in the bag it just helps minimize the leak problem. So I'm gonna be adding in my chicken broth the day of cooking, but it, already, it will already be in my pantry and all I have to do is pour it in. Remember the colors, they were wrong It was way more than a dream We climbed up, yeah, over the hillside So right, we stood there all wide-eyed You and I, floating on air in my mind Cause there's no going back, no going back There's no going back to your own life Living in the past, we're over there 
I'm feeling it tonight Riding on the dizzying heights Okay, so I've got my crock pot meatball veggie soup done. I just showed you putting one together because it is the same exact thing. So I've got these two together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get all my things together for my crock pot chicken soup. All right, the ingredients that I am using for my chicken soup with kind of a Tex-Mex vibe to it, I've got about five carrots. What I did was I took my five pound bag and I kind of divided it between the three. So I knew I wanted more carrots in the meatball veggie soup. So that's why I used eight. Then I'm going to use five in this one and the remainder of them, which I think ends up being four. Yeah, four in each bag for the last dish. So it's really up to you at the end of the day. So I've got five carrots I'm gonna be putting in each bag. I have this chili lime seasoning blend that I picked up from Trader Joe's. You could use cumin and chili powder, any kind of, or taco seasoning, really whatever you want. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of this into each bag. Then each one is gonna get one onion that I'm going to dice up two Roma tomatoes. Like I already mentioned, I'm going to do one and a half of these large chicken breasts. You could do two medium chicken breast or really however much chicken that you want. This is just what I'm going to be using. I'm only needing one lime. I don't want the lime to be overpowering, so I'm gonna use half of the juice into each one. So I'm gonna juice half a lime into each bag. And then I'm gonna do maybe two, two or three garlic cloves that I'm going to mince up. And last is one cup of tomato juice that I'm gonna put into each bag. And then again, I'm gonna save my chicken broth for the day of cooking. So really the instructions on all the bags are pull it out the night before, put it in your refrigerator, the day of, pour your bag into your crock pot, add your chicken broth, and then cook on low, six to eight hours. It's super simple. So let me go ahead and get all of this prepped. Next two are done. So one thing, when you are done cooking, I don't write it on the bag because I've made so many different variations of this that I know, but you are going to take the chicken out at the end of the cook time and shred it and then just put it back in and that concludes your soup and then serve it with your favorite Taco Tuesday items. So one thing is you can add corn and black beans to this. My kids used to love corn. Right now they're going through a phase. They don't like corn. And then my son Bryce is not a huge fan of black beans. So I don't hardly ever add black beans, but I 
do normally add corn to this. I just didn't this time because they're going through a phase, but they will eat the heck out of some tomatoes and carrots no matter what it's in. So those are two things that I know I can get into my kids' diet. So I just wanted to say if you guys want to add anything extra, you totally can. Again, you are gonna need the chicken broth on the day of cooking to really make this more soup-like. All right, the last meal that we are doubling is probably one of my favorites, my personal favorites. I really enjoy this one. So for this recipe, again, I am making it twice. I've got a 12 ounce bag of frozen chopped spinach, one pound of mild ground Italian sausage. You can use spicy if you prefer a little bit more heat. The rest of my carrots, so I'm gonna be putting in four. One whole onion that I'm going to dice up. The white kidney beans that I will drain and rinse. And then one 24 ounce jar of pasta sauce. Now. There are several recipes out there and I will have all of these written out in the description box. There's lots of recipes that tell you to put your ground beef or ground sausage, whatever ground meat at the top of your bag and uncooked. And when you put it in your crock pot, that way it goes on the bottom and you just cook it until the meat's done. I myself, I'm not a fan of that. I don't prefer to cook it that way. I like to pre-cook. I know it's an extra step. It's just a safety precaution. I want to make sure that this is done and it's cooked through and I'm not ruining any kind of meal. So really, because I am pre-cooking my meat, you don't have to cook it on low for six to eight hours, but there's no problem if you do. You really just want it long enough to where your carrots are nice and tender. So you could make this still if you preheat the meat or pre-cook the meat. You could still make this in the morning if you do work outside the home and then come home in your six to eight hours and it'll still be delicious. I mean, the longer the flavors have to combine, the better. Oh, and speaking of flavors, I didn't pull out my seasoning. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you guys what I'm going to use to season this dish. All right, so for this one, sometimes I do more of an Italian flavor and I'll use Italian seasoning but I have so many different mixes on hand that I'm just playing around with all of them. I'm gonna put the Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute in this one, about a tablespoon in each bag. So I think that will be good. The seasonings on there are just a whole bunch of mixtures, onion, black pepper, celery seed, cayenne pepper. So it'll give it a little bit of a kick. Some parsley, basil, thyme, I mean, all sorts of yummy goodness. So I, felt like that would be good. I haven't tried that seasoning mix in this before, but I think it will be good. You can use whatever you want though. I'm just letting you guys know what I am using. So we're gonna go ahead and get these last two prepped and bagged up and ready to put in the freezer. Okay, I'm going to start off by cooking my sausage and then I'm just going to set it to the side and that way it can start to cool while I am prepping everything else, cutting the onion, the carrots, all of that. That way the sausage is not super hot when I am ready to add it to my freezer bags. Now, one thing that I do is just a personal preference. It is not required, but anytime I am cooking ground meat, I always add a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder as well. Again, just something that is a personal preference and that I like to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this meat all cooked up.
Okay, last two are done. And now I have six dinners and this for sure will be another lunch for my entire family. This one and this one, we'll see. It just depends on how hungry we are that night and if we serve anything really extra with the chicken soup. But I think these are definitely smaller, but I did opt to put more meatballs in here. So this will be stretched a little bit further, but definitely very budget-friendly crock pot freezer meals. I do have several cloves of garlic left over that I will be able to use for another meal. And then I already have my chicken broth, and then I did opt to buy the garlic bread. I just bought the Walmart, you guys saw on the receipt, garlic bread or Texas toast that and breadsticks that are in my freezer waiting for me for whenever we pull these out and decide to have them for a dinner. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this series, but don't worry, I still love my crock pot and that doesn't mean that I'm going to now stop sharing crock pot recipes. I definitely will have a few more before the end of this year, but I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I did wanna go ahead and mention that I just launched a new website. So that is gonna be in the description box as well if you guys wanna go over there and check it out. I will be sharing a lot of crock pot recipes over there as well so it just makes it a little bit easier for you guys to look at the recipe and print them out also I will be announcing the winner for the giveaway tomorrow Saturday October 31st at the very end of the night on my community tab so all you have to do I had several questions asking Where's the community tab? If you go to the Lemonade Mom home screen for YouTube, there's little tabs that you can pick. There's videos, playlists, and there is one that says community. All you have to do is press that and it'll show you all the posts that I have made in there and that's where you will find the announcement for the giveaway winner. Also, if you are subscribed and you hit that bell and you click all notifications, you will be sent a notification from YouTube when I do post on that community tab so you should not miss it. So I just wanted to let you guys know that since I had a lot of questions about finding that tab, that is exactly where you go. So I hope you guys again are having a fantastic day and your weekend is fun and I will see you in the next video.